morning everyone i riddhi sangvi would like to welcome all of you for today's session on the topic journey of food and agri professionals to iim ahmedabad let's welcome our eminent guest speakers of the day ms ashna upadhyay and mr gagandeep parma who have been selected for the iim batch of 2022-24 iim especially iim ahmedabad is the dream college of every mba aspirant we have privilege of listening to two such individuals who have fought all all the odds and worked hard and now are part of this prestigious institute they will guide motivate and share their preparation journey with us i hope all the mba aspirants take the best out of today's session and get motivated to prepare well before starting the main session i would like to quickly introduce everyone to food yari food yari is a one stop educational platform for all your study needs and information regarding various aspects of food science and technology here you will get a comprehensive learning experience in the form of quizzes articles news updates pre recorded and live courses and much more we also connect you to a large number of food technologists so that you can learn and grow together let us introduce to the first speaker of the day ms ashna upadhyay ma'am ms ashna upadhyay has completed her bsc in agriculture from gb pant university of agriculture and technology she has previously worked as an assistant manager in strategy and operation department at geo platforms limited she also has a work experience of 20 months she is interested in the latest developments in the agri tech and logistics sector and wishes to work with new age technologies like iot in agriculture she is also the recipient of aaa piratna award in her college and has been awarded as the standout performer at geo she is keen on working effectively and leading strategy strategy projects in future welcome ma'am i would now like to introduce to our second speaker of the day mr gagandeep parma sir Mr Gagandeep Parma has completed his BTech in food technology and management management from Niftem Kundli he has a work experience of 20 months in operations at Nestle he is passionate about food problem solving and marketing from winning a national case study competition at IIM Lucknow to designing a campaign for 18 plus and a youtube series know all your alumni to leading a team of 100 plus students during his college fest gagan has done it all this session is going to be very exciting and full of energy as both our speakers are eager to share their journey with us before we start this q and a session with ms ashna and mr gagandeep i would like to request everyone to post your questions in the chat box below we will get back to them after the discussion thank you so let's start with the first question being a food technologist generally people go for mtech and complete complete their masters in the core branch why did you decide to go for an mba instead so i would like to ask ashna ma'am what does she want to say about this thing um so um i was in the food technologist uh, that is not only For me, uh, my branch was obviously agriculture, and uh, the reason that I wanted to pursue an MBA and not go into the master's was because it was my natural inclination during my degree program, and uh, for that I wanted to, you know, uh, put my entire knowledge that I gained during four years of my degree program into the public sector. So I went for a work experience at Geo, and then for that I realized that. the project that i was working on oh, uh, i am very to sorry to interrupt ashna ma'am your voice is breaking okay. could uh, you check the internet connection yeah i am connected to the wifi but yeah yeah am i better audible right now yeah yeah we can hear you clearly please continue okay great so yeah as i was telling you uh, that i went on to uh, uh, get my work ex at geo and post that i realized that the most logically consequent step for me was to get an mba so that i could lead the projects that i was working on 
and so um, here i am great what was your why did you choose this mr gagan okay uh, so basically my journey for mba started niftum itself so uh, the curriculum at niftum is designed in a way that you have two technology with a blend of management you know where we study marketing finance accounts everything uh, in the four years so my interest developed in marketing from there onwards and I, when i participated in few case study and b plan competitions uh, i was doing fair enough in the case study but when we were going to present the b plan competitions it came to me that i need the proper knowledge of the domain so we were not winning it and we were not able to compete with the mba grads that time so that is how uh, it went and then when i joined nestle i saw how brand managers work so that came to me as a dream job role uh, once i go after an mba so that is how it went and now i'm here wow great let's move on to our second question which is how did you start preparing for cat and initially how should we go about it so mr gagandeep would you like to answer yeah sure so i'll take this question so my cat journey started around june last year i would say i, I had made up my mind in my, during my final year only that i'll get a couple of years of workage and then i'll go for an mba was going as a fresher did uh, sound logical to me to be very honest at that moment so uh, started around june I uh, first prepared first month dedicated the first month to DILR only. I was I gave a couple of mocks and realized I was good with uh, DILR. So one month was for DILR, then three months were straight for points, and for VARC, which was my weaker section, uh, I was just going through uh, the materials, the articles, the newspapers, things like those, and that's how it went. And last uh, one and one and a half months were all just mocks. nothing else but mocks so that is how i went with the journey okay great what about you ashna ma'am oh uh, so for me my maiden attempt in cat was in my final year and i had started uh, taking the weekend coaching uh, towards the second semester of my third year so i kind of knew that i had a very strong suit in varc and i did not have to work very hard towards it so i started with practicing a lot of rcs because uh, as even uh, the students would realize that instead i mean of course the concepts are important but the main uh, um, command over the area would come when you would start solving the rcs uh, i was good at lrdi so i started with brushing up with the very basic concepts first uh, first i got those concepts on my fingertips then i started with the level of difficulty one questions and then i revised all those level of difficulty one questions again only then i would move to the lod2 and lod3 in case of lrdi because that helps bring the uh, build up confidence and quants uh, since biology was my stream in 11th and 12th uh, i was always very scared of quants so uh, i realized over the time that i cannot you know have a strong suit in all the chapters that were there especially when it came to the chapters such as number system so i first picked up the topics which had a lot of uh, um uh, percentage in the cat exam for example arithmetic so i started with that i completed all those 6 7 chapters and then i revised all those chapters again it it was only after i got a good command over those chapters Uh, was when i proceeded to the next ones and of course the last 2 3 months were a lot of mocks great let's move on to our next question then is it possible to prepare for cat while doing a job or should one take a break and prepare for the exam as you both were working professionals so i want to know this answer from both of you and what was your time table during that uh, period of preparation so uh, i think i would really uh, like to assert one thing here that uh, i won't recommend anybody to take a break and then prepare for cat because let's say even if you do get a decent percentage right there will be a lot of people alongside you who would get probably the same percentile or a percentile more than you would and still clear cat so it would be very hard for you or even if you do justify it sometimes um the the rates of conversion won't be as well so uh i don't think it would be that difficult 
to uh, prepare for CAT alongside if you are dedicated enough. Uh, the timetable that I followed was that I used to wake up early <laughs> because uh, naturally uh, there are times when, you know, because of the workload, we won't be able to extend or um, give the uh, later half of the day towards the preparation. And I used to start up with the most difficult subject for me, and that was quants. So even if I'm preparing one to two hours on the weekdays, I would dedicate the majority of my time on the weekend towards the CAT preparation. And uh, that continued until uh, uh, September, after which I used to dedicate a lot of my time. Like I used to take out three to four hours on the weekdays itself because there were mocks and the analyzing also. Very interesting. Uh, so my take on this would be, uh, so I was working with the factory, you know, I was in a factory job in operations. So you have to report at 8.30 in the factory. So I had no other option, but if I had to prepare, I had to give some time to it. So I would, I would dedicate one and a half to two hours in the morning. And to be very honest, I didn't do anything in the evenings okay, for the, at least for the first three months, because I didn't have the will part to do it in the evening but uh, when i was in the last phase uh, in the last month then it was about giving a mock every day in the morning last 20 25 days facing it post office hours so the simple answer to the to do then you will have to do it. there's no other option either you are working or you are not working but once you dedicate yourself to it then you will face it Very inspiring stories. Let's move on to our next question, which is, what was your strategy for preparation for every section? And which section was most difficult for you and how did you tackle it? So, Mr. Gagandi, please answer this question. Yeah, so I'll take it. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll go to the three questions. For VRC, I am not someone who is a avid reader. I never read a book in my life till I was in college, okay, apart from the subjectives. So uh, in the final year when pandemic happened, so when I was at my home, I started reading a few books, two, three books every month. So that is how the preparation journey started from there onwards, because I knew that this is my weak point. So during the CAT preparation in six months, uh, I got the Hindu editorial uh, for that. So I will, will start my day with two editorials that Hindu has every day. And then a few articles I'll go through during office hours. And this was for VRC basically. And the other part was just practice. Just practice in the sectionals and the marks. For DILR, as I said, I I had a strategy to do it in June month itself. Say two days for pie charts, two days for games and tournaments, the different subtopics that are there in DILR. So in one month, I completed DALR, and then it was just about mocks. And the next three months, because they are more or less around 12 to 15 topics in points, you see, in total. So you have uh, made up my mind to have one week for each topic. So more or less in three months, everything was covered. And like two months as a buffer, because when you are working, you think coming up when you will not do anything a week or two. So that was how I went for different sections. BRC was my weakest one, and I thought fair enough in BRC. So, now what is your say? Hello, Ashna, ma'am. Would you like to share your side of the story? How did you tackle your difficult sections and what was difficult for you during that preparation period? Yeah. So, uh, like I said, uh, I had biology in my 11th and 12th. So, quant was naturally something uh, challenging for me. And I started with the very basics. So, for me, uh, I realized that if I cover the initial chapters, they are also, I mean, uh, chapters such as ratio, proportion and percentages. These two uh, are very useful even in the LRDI, you know, a lot of topics. And they also form the basis of shortcuts for a lot of other chapters. So I made my command over these chapters. Then I moved towards geometry because that is, I mean, that, that took a lot of time of my preparation. And alongside, uh, I used to prepare for VRC and DLR. So quants was something that I used to do every single day because naturally that was a little difficult for me. 
for vaic uh, for those of you who do not have a reading habit uh, i would suggest uh, that you start reading uh, editorials so let's say um, for those of you who do read a little bit you can start with the hindu and for those who haven't read at all uh, you should start with editorials from the indian express uh, because they would be comparatively easier for you and uh, if i mean currently if you're aiming for cat 2022 i would not recommend reading novels and the entire newspapers but if you do have a lot of time and you're you know targeting cat for the next year you can pick up a few good novels or you can pick up uh, newspapers in general and then solve a lot of rcs because see uh, in this scenario practicing would only uh, improve uh, you know your score and uh, reading would not uh, help a lot if you're aiming for cat 22 uh, similarly with dilr i started with the basic concepts uh, some of the important chapters are games and tournaments uh, arrangements because you won't get direct questions from arrangements but they would come in you know as packs of two three different topics and post that because there is no particular book that you can pick up for dilr i think you should go for a lot of mocks and previous year questions and for quants you can go for arun sharma or any module that you can pick because uh, you can find a lot of questions there itself awesome i i also like to add something that i missed uh, second year uh, for vars c which was my ek section so you don't have to worry if one of the sections is weak you know cat is not about your knowledge testing it's sort how you are attempting it so in the even in the final exam uh, i was good with va good with i was not good with rcs every time i had a mock so in the final exam out of eight questions that came in va i scored 8 on 8 And out of five questions that I attempted in RC, only two were correct. I attempted only five questions in RC. So still, you get above ninety percent time even in this. So if your VA is good, focus on VA. So that is also one thing. Yes, this is a very important point because a lot of food technologies, being non-engineers, so we fear math, we fear quants, and people usually feel that we won't be able to ta tackle that uh, section really well, or we we'll lose marks in that. but we can cover up our weakness with our strengths so we can build and work on our strength section yeah let's move on to our next question which is what was the most difficult phase during your preparation journey because being uh, or studying for a competitive exam requires months and months of rigorous practice hard work enthusiasm and lot of times we there are highs and lows during that preparation phase but we need to strengthen or we need to strengthen ourselves during those lows and overcome them so what did you do and what was your most difficult phase i would like to take on this question so my difficult phase was basically in the last one month uh, the it was around 28th november that cat was there and around diwali holidays it was first week of november i think so i came home after six odd months and then i gave a mock and i realized that i am nowhere okay that i might have to do another year work another year which i didn't want to do so i was uh, very upset then the 22 days uh, from 6 to 11 so that was the phase which i in the most as well as it was the most difficult so i will wake up at 5:30 i will give a mock from 6 to 8 i'll work in office from 8:30 to say 6:30 or 7 then i'll analyze it once i come back from so those 20 day, days were the best i would say those are difficult as well as the best on weekends i used to give full marks so that was the most difficult part what you want baba mummy like i i for me it would be uh, definitely towards the end um but i think i still remember the first mock i gave after a good uh, preparation and i did not score well so uh, it, it does become challenging towards the end because you know there are days when we have a lot of workload and so uh, like if you are fluent with your preparation and let's say you were not able to you know analyze a mock or not study for a week or two uh, you know the entire flow breaks and then it's very hard to get back on track so that happened quite a few times uh, but i think i made it up in the end yeah this enthusiasm and the 
will to prove and overcome obstacles got you into iim let's move on to our next question which is how are mocks useful because we were speaking about mocks and everyone knows that it is very important to give mocks regularly but how useful they are and when should one start giving the mock during their preparation journey so uh, definitely mocks are very useful when we are in if we are in the initial phases of our preparation and let's say uh, we take up a dlr question so i remember there were times when i used to spend 20 to 30 minutes in solving one set and that's like more than half of the time that we get for a particular section so once we are you know done and it's a myth that you know you should start with mocks once you are through with the entire preparation because we know that that never happens it's very rare that you will be able to complete the entire syllabus so i feel a good uh, time to start with the mocks is around august september and then you know initially you should give uh, one mock a week or like uh, in 10 days because you know it's the start and you know you don't want to feel the burnout and then it's very very important to analyze the mock so let's say you gave a mock that was 2 to 1 and a half hour you need to spend at least 4 to 5 hours to analyze it and then you know understand where you lack and how you can overcome that particular area great so one needs to analyze themselves after every mock to learn what mistakes they are making and to not repeat the same mistakes again uh, so for me it was around june that i purchased the uh, ims syncats so when i started my preparation so these uh, courses are designed in a way that from june july august they will give you a mock every alternate weekend only they'll not give you a mock every weekend okay so i made sure that i give mock any way there is no option that i would leave the mock no matter how what uh, whatever i have studied in the week or i have went so i'll give the mocks in those time so it helped and in the final days uh, just like i said the last 20 25 days i gave a mock so that helped because my average score in the mocks went from around 70 percentile to 98 percentile in the last mocks so that was the difference that the mocks made so you get the real sense of exam and my slot was also the morning slot so i used to give it in the morning only so that also helps great so and i would fine. like to yeah. add one thing here uh, that uh, it's it's always uh, you know advised to take two different mock series if you can because you know one series would be focusing on let's say um, difficult level questions right and the other would be easier questions or maybe um, more realistic in terms of the main exam so you would get an actual picture by taking two different series from two different sources so that's one thing that you can always consider great so we need to analyze our mistake correct them and we need to consistently give mocks to know our areas of improvement let's move on to our next question which is when you would get low scores in mocks how did you deal with that pressure so this happened with me every time every time i gave a mock i never scored above 80 percent i in vrc i will score good in the other sections but never in vrc so the only solution to deal with the pressure was to work on it there is no other solution to it right so whatever i was reading whatever stuff i was going through i made sure i am consistent and consistent in that and the final bit was to be concentrated during the time in the time period of the mock sometimes you have distractions here and there and then you miss the especially the vrc section you need good concentration so that was for me uh, i get that it's very disheartening to see low scores in mocks despite the hard uh, hard work and all the efforts um, but i think it's very important to also take a quick break and know when to get back so for me what i used to do was i used to watch a quick movie if i saw you know low scores because it it becomes very difficult for us to you know immediately go and analyze them i personally would never be in the mood to analyze the mocks immediately after you know looking at those scores so i would take a quick break maybe go out or watch a movie which we had obviously stopped doing for a lot of time and then you know analyze where we went wrong 
So what we can do in quants and the LRDI particularly is, let's say we are solving a particular set or a particular topic from a method A. And uh, you know every mock that we take, it also provides solutions. So you know you should go through those solutions and look for a method two or a method three, which is shorter than yours and probably more easy than yours. And I would suggest that you go for test series, which also provide video solutions to you. Because you know when you watch those video solutions, you learn new methods of solving that same problem. And that would come in very handy at the time of exams. Very important point that's over here. I just want to request all the participants, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box below. We'll get back to them after end of this discussion. So let's move on to our next question, which is, is it difficult for students without any work experience to convert IIM or any other premier institute for MBA? I'll take the question. Yeah. So it is always recommended to have some work experience because you have certain points or you have certain uh, score in the composite score that you get for a PI call. It is there for some people with work ex, but it's not like pressures can't go there. There are a good number of pressures in every college, but uh, more than that, what I believe is apart from the work ex and the pressure thing, you should have some points to discuss in the interview. Once you have a work ex, you have good points to discuss in the interview. Even your complete interview can go on the work ex only. So if you have built a good profile where you have talking points for the interview, then it's good to go as a pressure also, but uh, work ex also adds some good points in my opinion. Great. What about you, Ashna? Yeah, same. I think Gagan has covered it well, that uh, if you're going for an MBA, it does make sense to have work ex, you know, because you understand what you would be studying for the next two years much better. But still, if you do aim at, uh, you know, going for it directly, uh, you do not have any disadvantage because a lot of uh, students do convert right after college. Adding an example to this word, she said, uh, basically, when you work in a culture, in an organization, you get to know what is office politics, right? You, do, you always hear what is office politics. And then when you go to the college and you study subjects like organization behavior, and you relate very to it. So, and you relate how businesses work. So that is the difference that work gets means. Very true. Work X, I think, will help anyone to relate what they are studying to. So it will be easy for uh, any student to understand and grasp those, those concepts. Um, let's move on to our next question, which is what is average percentile required to convert IM Ahmedabad FABM course? Okay, so to get a call, uh, I'll cover from the people who have a ba uh, background in food technology. So for food technology background people, I think the last call was around 90 percent time from what I know. Not more less than 90 watt and even 90 is when you have good 10th and 12th and graduation score above 90 in all, at least above 85 in all. Because I know some people who have 99 percent time and they have around 70 percent in 12. They didn't get a call from FABM and the world. They got called from Lucknow, ABM, but not from FABM. And then there are people who are 94, 95, but 12 for around 80s. So they also didn't get called. So at, uh, aim above 95, no matter what your pass scores are, they don't matter now. You can't change them. Okay, so aim for a 95 plus percentile and you will have good college calls at least. And then the convert is only on the interview. 50% of the score is through the interview only. So once you get a call, make sure you convert. Great. Yeah, I would agree with Gagan that uh, even for agriculture graduates, um, 95 plus is a decent score to accept, uh, expect a convert. But yeah, it does depend on your work X and your 10th and 12th uh, uh, percentages because IMA is very academic heavy. So uh, Gagan gave me an example where, uh, you know, despite having a 98th percentile, the person could not uh, convert it. Um, and uh, I have seen, uh, I know people who have converted it because of uh, 10th and 12th percentages at an 88 uh, percentile as well. Uh, an important thing to keep in mind is you also uh, aim for an 80 plus uh, section. 
very important point here that we need to keep in mind that we need to at least reach around 95 percentile to be sure that we can at least get a call for the interview Let's move on to our next question, which is, when did you start preparation for group discussion and personal interview? For me, it started around uh, Jan, and I think. Yeah, Jan. So I, I got COVID positive in Jan, and then I was filling applications of various, I got 15 days leave. That was the best part of COVID. So I got a 15 day leave, and I applied to every college that I could in my store, the store that I had. So I was filling SOPs. I was then preparing for how to write SOPs and how to prepare for interviews. So Feb and March, Jan, Feb and March, these were the ones that I dedicated for interviews completely because I didn't had a very high score to be very honest to convert. I was not that hopeful for a convert, but uh, I made sure that I do best for PI preps. So I enrolled in CAT King PI course. Uh, it was good. We had some lectures daily and it helped me. It helped me to frame answers and to get a map of what is going around the world. Anything and everything can be asked in the interview. So you have to make sure you know everything that has happened in the past few years in the world and everything that you have done in life really well. Great. So uh, likewise for me, uh, I had a lot of uh, workload towards the end of the year. So I could not uh, start my preparation early. So mine uh, started around the last week of January and uh, because I was already late and I thought that, you know, a lot of uh, the coaching centers, they already begin with their preparations like towards December. Uh, so I decided to prepare on my own. And uh, what I did for that was I contacted a lot of IMA Alps since this was the college I was targeting. And it, it is very useful when you talk to the alumni and people who have converted it because they can tell you the right resources and the right, you know, uh, prep material that you should go through. So that came in very handy. And uh, uh, the last two months, Feb and March were the months of very, very rigorous preparation. So it, it really requires a lot of time and dedication so that you can cover all the topics. And yeah, that would be about it. So just what? like she mentioned that you have to connect with alums, it is true for every college. Mm -hmm. I had interviews from around six colleges and I connected with alums for all colleges. Not to know because every college has a different say. Say like you go for IMA, they have something with the cats. Then you go for a college like MICA, then they have everything with the brand. They are not going to ask you anything that you have done in life. They are going to ask you about brand. You go for an IIT, they'll ask you about the specifications of things. Why is my pink wall swings more than red wall. What is the size of bat? Why it is designed in that way? So these are the questions that every college has a different pattern. So you have to make sure that you touch with the alums and you go through various interview experiences on Quora. Every college has put some interview experiences on Quora. So that will end. Generally, during which month of the year uh, the personal interview and uh, group discussion rounds take place? So you get calls around uh, after mid of Jan. You get calls from mid of Jan to end of Jan. And then the interview starts anytime from uh, mid Feb to March end. It depends on colleges. Some private colleges will do it in Feb and release the result in the first week of March. Okay. But the uh, IMs and IITs majorly will uh, have interviews around March and will de uh, declare the results around May. So, great. Let's move on to our next question then, which is, can you brief, briefly describe your interview experience? Because interview is a very important component in getting selected. And what do you think helped you to crack that interview? Okay, so um, my, uh, my interview experience, it was very diverse in terms of the questions asked. So uh, since I had a work ex, uh, the first question was about my job role. And then there were second and third degree questions about that. So for those of you who do not understand second and third degree questions, um, I'll explain that to you. So for example, you were asked a question about your job role and you answer with operations. 
So they would ask you a question about operations and then let's say you talk about a particular um, project that you worked on. And then the third degree question would be about that project that you worked on. So whether you are a fresher or you're not a fresher, you need to be very thorough about what you did. When you start with your PI prep, the first thing that you need to start with is who you are and what you have done. And then you need to prepare a, a short answer and a very long answer about that. Um, and then subsequently, first degree, second degree, and third degree questions. So yeah, it revolved around my vertex. There were questions related to the subjects that I studied in uh, agriculture. So for that, I had prepared two subjects very thoroughly because there are times when the interviewers ask you about your favorite subject. And then they ask you about your second favorite subject and then ask you questions from the second one. So it's always advisable to prepare two subjects. And then the questions were about uh, why MBA, which are the generic questions, where I want to get placed at after an MBA program. And then there were current affairs and a lot of geography questions pertaining to different states. It was very surprising to hear that you had geography questions as well. <laughs> yeah. There are people who were asked the districts of Pakistan even in the interview. So you can't expect anything in the interview. For me, the interview experience was uh, good. It was just around a 15 minutes interview. Uh, of all the interviews that I gave, the shortest was I made. So it started with the, my job role, then what is my contribution to the organization, how it helps, then we went to what roles I'm looking after uh, post I complete MBA from FABM and why FABM. So these are some of the questions that I started with. Then they were asking me around Maggie since I was working with Maggie. So they asked me questions around Maggie, around health, uh, health question of various food products in the market. Then they went to hobbies. So I think I was able to satisfy them uh, till here only. Then it was about hobbies. Then they asked me about cricket. Then, they, then there was a general discussion for five minutes. Cricket, music, anything and everything. Then they were asking me who all his friends are here. And then who all you know. Then it was a pretty chill after that. So if you can make it in the first five, six minutes, I think you are good to go. What worked for me, I guess, was uh, the confidence that I had in the interview and the clarity of thought. Because uh, there was a point where they asked me, how good are you with maths and stats? Because the program is very rigorous. You are going to an IM. So how good are you at it? And what I just answer, I'm very good at it. I've studied maths all my life, and I think I will be easily able to make it through. And then they didn't ask any other question post that. So that also helps sometimes. Great. So being well prepared and having a clarity of thought and being very sure about what you have done and what you have not done is very important to be good in the interview. Good to know that. Let's move on to our next question, which is, did you give any other MBA exam other than the CAT? Yes, so I prepared for, I appeared for CAT, then I appeared for IFT, I appeared for ZAT, and I also appeared for my CAT. I didn't get a good percentile in ZAT, same around CAT. Uh, then I scored a good score in my CAT and I converted MICA also. Then all the other colleges that I applied, uh, which were MICA, Bitson, IMT, IIT Kharagpur, IIT Kanpur, I converted these colleges. These were through CAT only. So, that was the major chunk of it because I didn't score good in any other exam. So, yeah, I mean, it is always advised that you should have a safety net and you should give a lot of exams and not focus on one. However, I did not follow that because I already had my maiden cat attempt uh, in the final year of my degree program. So I knew that I was targeting IMA for FABM. So I only gave cat. And uh, I was sure that if I do not convert it this time, then I would have appeared for GMAT, given that uh, next year by this time, I would have a work X of 2.5 years. So it made sense that I go for that. Great, very interesting. Let's move on to our next question, which is how important is it, it is to build a profile and what you should do for profile building? Because I am look for people who are very unique, who have a unique thought process, who have done very interesting things during their 
previous job or during their education so even while working or even while studying so if someone wants to pursue mba from such premier institute so how should they start building their profile so i will take on this question so this is uh, first of all this is a myth that we, the iims only look for people with good profiles it is true for colleges like spg and for some who have profile this for but uh, when you go, go for iims the profile which they mean is 10th 12th graduation and work ex they are not looking after your extracurriculars at least for getting a pi call okay so first is that and what you can do for uh, having a good profile which is again linked to uh, that you should have talking points for the interview the more the talking points that are the more good it is for you you know they won't divert to say any other i didn't get any current affairs question i prepared well but i didn't get any current affairs question because i had things to talk about in a profile so what you can do is participate in a lot of competitions there are a lot of case study competitions pre plan competitions if you are sure that you want to get into an mba if you are good at the tech side prepare for tech competition you can have a research paper you can uh, have an interview on your research paper the only thing that they look for is whatever you have done how thorough you are with it be it on the technical side or be it on the managerial side so that is what you can do to build a profile very interesting um yeah i think agan has covered it up very well one thing that i would like to add here is um, it also depends on what stage of preparation you are at so currently it's june and if you are preparing for cat 22 i don't think you should focus on uh, building your profile at all if you do get some time between your uh, you know final uh, cat scorecard and uh, the pi calls maybe you can utilize that time but again that that would be a separate uh, set of uh, things that you would target at that time and again if you are a fresher and in your third or you know in the final year uh you can uh, target a lot of uh, extra curricular activities or maybe you can join the place form or other you know positions of responsibilities wherever you get a chance because uh, these things do add up eventually when you join the mba college and of course these are not necessary for your pi call but then you do get um, you know to talk about it if you know uh, you are asked about it because it depends completely upon you how you want to direct your interview so you should put cues when you are answering questions so that those interviewers pick up on those cues and uh, ask you more questions on that very interesting right so, so basically what it is that having some good talking points you can do gagan sir i think you your, can uh, leave clues some internet issue that. on your side okay, okay. your voice is break gagan sir Am I audible now? Uh, yeah, better. Yeah. 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 So I was talking about the that you get brownie points when you have a good profile. You leave some clues for the interview in the in your intro only. You tell three four things like those, like you have led the press team, that you have done this project, so that people can catch on upon them, and then you can drive the interview instead of the interviewer uh, driving the interview. So that is. very interesting so one should know during the interview how we need to prepare the interview or we need to uh, be ready for any sort of scenario how we can drive the conversation during our personal interview so good to know that so i uh, also have one question which is what is the difference between i am ahmedabad and i am lucknow course because both are uh, agri related course but i think I am Ahmedabad has the FABM course and I am Lucknow has the ABM course. So what is different different difference between both the courses? Okay, so uh, I have gone through the curriculums and I have talked to people who are there. So the difference is uh, that uh, for FABM program you have separate placements. The major difference is you have separate placements. The placements for PGP are different. The placements for PGP FABM are different. so you get a different companies you get different roles the entire placement process is different so that is what i mean and then you get more of the profiles in the fcd consulting but every sector you get broadman roles also for fcd but then the placements are different for uh, i am lucknow abm course the difference is that the placements are common so that you can even get 
in say the normal companies that uh, PGP ones are getting into also. But it also depends on what your areas of interest is are. So in my opinion, uh, if you are getting into say FABM or ABM course, then I think you are getting into because you have some particular interest in that sector. Else you can go for some other college and go for a normal PGDM course. Right? So okay. that is what my opinion is fun. And what percentile or what percentile should we target to go into IM Lucknow ABM course? Same, anything above 95 is good to get a call okay. for profiles. Uh, also, the, the, there are higher sectional percentile for IM Lucknow ABM program around 80 you won't get a call if you have uh, if you are not cleared sections above 80 for Ahmedabad you will get above 70 oh, okay. that is also one of the very interesting let's now start questions from the chat box audience questions so, hello Ashna ma'am are you there yeah yeah I'm here actually okay. the electricity went off so I'm no problem. Yeah, sure. No problem. So, uh, Mansi is asking, what's a good book which you will suggest for VRC section? Ashna can take this. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, firstly, for RCs, I don't think, I mean, I haven't heard of any uh, good book. But for VA, if you really, you know, feel the need to uh, just brush up with your concepts, you can definitely use Renan Martin. That is widely recommended and uh, it will really help you. But again, it, it, I mean, this is not the time to start with Renan Martin or any additional course books if you are targeting for CAT 22. If you have one year in hand, then definitely you can go into the concepts and all the details of it. Right now, you should just you know, focus on solving a lot of questions, uh, enrolling yourself into a coaching institute and religiously following whatever the teacher is teaching you. Okay, great. Next question is from Shubhada, who is asking, from your point of view, what are the pros and cons of having work experience before going for master's? Adding on to what we have discussed for the work ex related or work ex versus precious, uh, one more point is when you go with a certain amount of work ex, say with uh, for IMA, it is more than 18 months. You get to certain lateral placements, you know, which are different from the ones that freshers get. So uh, having above 18 months of work ex always helps uh, because you get different roles. Okay. So you want to start as a management team, you will, you will get a different role and then there are certain companies that will prefer people with work ex and certain companies that will prefer only freshers say for instance uh, might prefer people work ex and the marketing companies might prefer freshers so okay. that is also a difference okay. would you like to uh, touch upon this topic ashna oh i think he has covered it up there okay great Let's move on to our next question, which is by Mansi, who is asking, according to you, one should proceed for CAD directly after graduation or they should wait and work? Simple answer is if you have a good offer in hand, go for a work hits. If you don't, then I think prepare for CAD. Okay. The next question is by Sanaya who's asking why FABM over any other MBA course? So why not the conventional PGDM? Yeah. So, um, see, it is really dependent on how passionate you are towards the sector. For me and Gagan, it was very clear that we wanted to, you know, do our MBA and FABM because we wanted to stick to the sector and we were very passionate about it. But if you would, let's say, uh, join an ABM program and then, you know, still want to uh, pursue job roles, which are not concerned towards the sector, then it's better that you go for a simple PGDM program. Adding on to it, uh, my point was uh, for this FABM course was basically people from other sectors are coming into the food sector. If you see Shark Tank in India recently, if you have seen it, 
so you will see a lot of entrepreneurs from different sectors getting into food sector opening ventures in food so when i have a certain ex work ex and i have a graduation in the same field i don't want to go to other field i would have preferred but then at last i had made up my mind that i will go with this one it will always help me in the long run very true food space is a very exciting and innovative space when where we can leash out our creativity and work on very interesting things so related to that naman is asking why do you feel what do you feel about starting a venture then joining a multinational company so why not start your own business instead of doing a job Uh, I I mean, can you could you repeat the question? So uh, Naman is asking, what do you feel about starting a venture rather than joining an MNC? It's it's about the interview actually. So it's around uh, since you were asked in the interviews that what all companies would you be targeting? Yeah. Instead, if you could tell them that you will starting your own, how will you tackle that? Are you taking it, Asha? No, I thought you were taking it. Okay, so so I'll answer from what I heard from other people's experience also. So there were people who clearly told that they want to venture on their own. So when you tell this, even even in my interviews, when I was asked what is your long term goal, so I will tell them that I want to start on my own, say around eight to ten years from now. so when you tell this thing you have to make sure that you are well versed with the terms of a start you have you should know at least you should know that what is an angel investor who what is the startup that is moving in the country right now what are the sectors you know how much investment the government is making into the sectors things like this so you have to be well versed with whatever you are saying as simple as that and uh, basic terms you should at least know great let's move on to our next question which is by rohan he is asking what will you say on the abm course over mba so if someone wants to pursue abm course so i think this question has been nearly answered earlier as well so that it the is first thing is abm is also mba it is yeah. mba in the field of agri business management the specialization is agri business management Maybe he wanted to ask why normal MBA versus the EBM. Yeah. We have covered it. I think this is a matter of choice for yes. anyone. Yeah. And if you are asking about the course at IMA, so the first year in FABM course is the same with PGP. That is the general MBA, okay. right? In the second year, everybody has electives. So for the FABM people, the electives would be related to food and agri business. Similarly, some somebody who is interested in finance would take up finance as an elective. Similarly, with HR and so on and so forth. Okay. Right. The course curriculum is same. You will have same teachers. You will have same classrooms for the entire first year. And for second year, you have to choose your elective basically. At IIM, there is no specialization as such. You choose elective in the second year. Okay. We have one more question uh, by Asnan. He is asking that he is an average student and he did not have very high scores during his previous academic or during his school days or college days. So, how easy or difficult is it for a student with a average or a poor score to convert IIMs or to get into good MBA colleges? I think the first. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. first part is no, to be eligible to be eligible to a peering CAT because uh, first is to be eligible in CAT. I think there is a minimum of fifty or sixty percent that you ought to have. Then for applying to IIMs, then you should have at least seventy percent. I I guess you can check on the websites, but I think it is around sixty five seventy percent which you should have at least. Once you have cleared that criteria, you are good to go. It's up to you. so adding on to that 
I would suggest that you, you know, target IMs based on your profile. By profile, I mean your 10, 12th in grad schools. So we all know that I am L, I am A's, these are very academic heavy, right? For uh, I am Lucknow, I think the sectionals are around 85 plus. Okay. Similarly, I am Ahmedabad also very, is like focuses on 90 plus and uh, 10th. And similarly, majority of the batch would have an 85 plus and 10, 12th. But I am Calcutta is like a little flexible on that. Similarly, I am like there are CAP IMs. There are so many IMs in the country. You can, you know, uh, open each uh, website for the whichever IM you're targeting. And based on your profile, you can target those set of colleges because I'm sure each one has uh, a different target for the coming students. Let's move on to our next question, which is what are the other career pathways you would suggest after completing undergraduate in food technology if anyone does not want to pursue MBA? So being related to food and agriculture background, both of you, so any other career options you want to suggest? I think the first one is to go for a job directly. Uh, you can go for a job in the different sectors. You can go in operations, you can go in b you can go in marketing, something. Other is to go for an MTech or MSc in India. You can go for an MS abroad. Else you can go for an MBA. And the best is to start on your own, if you can. Ashna ma'am, what's your take on this? Yeah, I mean, I think Gagan covered it up. And it also, I mean, you know, we are in times where uh, our graduations are like, you know, they do not matter a lot. If, if you really want to uh, change your stream or let's say pursue into something new, you can obviously do that. Uh, but here, I think I would like to focus more on uh, our journeys and uh, how you know they have led us uh, into uh, FABM. Okay, great. So I would again request anyone if they have any questions, please put them in the chat box so that we can answer those questions. Now uh, let's move on to the next question, which says, "What else should one do uh, besides attending classes?" So what can you do on your own or something, some preparatory steps which we can do on our own on a daily basis. So if you do not want to enroll into a coaching institute, that's perfectly fine. A lot of people uh, prepare on their own. There's plenty of material on YouTube. There are plenty of sites um, that offer free resources for you. Uh, the first thing I think you should start with is uh, you know downloading the material for it. The second would be going to sites such as rcprep.com. I mean, this is one site that I remember which offers free RCs and all these are timed. Similarly, there are sites, uh, there, there are a lot of YouTube channels. Um, there is iQuanta. I mean, there are, there are Facebook groups which provide you free resources. And then you can download uh, the previous year question papers, then enroll in mocks and uh, subsequently solve those mocks on a daily basis. Right, adding on to what Ashna said, uh, I didn't enroll for any coaching institute. I was going for the mock test series only, but I did was uh, check something that is happening around you. So on the Telegram, if you search cat preps, you will get enough uh, groups on there. So I downloaded the resources through that. I got all the time video lectures. Uh, for free from that and then I still have every I have all the booklets of time that are there for solving the questions if any one of you is interested in getting that they can ping me I'll send them over me so look out for resources uh, there is not like you totally have to go for a coaching center at least not for that it was true for JE but not for that thanks for answering that so as we have no more questions with us, I just want to ask both of you if you would want to suggest something to students or any final tip which you want to give to the, uh, those who are aspiring to reach IIM. My only uh, suggestion would be to be consistent, to uh, go through it regularly, even if you have to leave some parties you have to leave it for a few months and 
trust me at the end of it it is all worth it i used to have colleagues in my office who would taunt me on you are not going to any parties you are not coming with us on weekends but now once i am through then they are all happy for it and even i am happy for it so i can enjoy i, I had a one and a half month break and now i am enjoying every bit of it we can have it all later just be consistent with what you are doing Great to know your story. Yeah. So for the cat prep, of course, consistency is key, right? Um, you know, you have to go through the mocks. I think most of you know a lot of these things. So I would like uh, to add a few points for the PI prep. And the first would be uh, all of you would lo would watch a lot of YouTube videos. You know, you would know that okay, these are the things that you should be saying. These are the things you should not be saying. We tend to consume a lot of this material, and we tend to forget that what makes us unique. That that's an answer that only we can frame, and that's the answer that will get you a convert. So uh, right after you're done with your cat prep, start. You know, get a diary, start writing all your achievements, everything you've done, all your hobbies, and do not try to frame answers because you will get caught. So let's say one of you picks up a hobby towards the end just for the sake of the interview. And then the interviewer starts asking you something that happened five years ago in that particular spot or music or dance, whatever the event you've mentioned. And then, you know, they'll, they'll catch that light. So be yourself, be 100% confident, and be unique. These three things would be enough to get you a convert. Very inspiring answer. Thank you. I think as we are now done with the Q&A session, let's proceed to the vote of thanks part. So with great honor and privilege, I would like to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of Team Pudiari and myself to express our sincere gratitude to Ms. Ashna Upadhyay and Mr. Gagandeep Parma for sparing their valuable time and sharing their journey to IIM Ahmedabad with us. This session was very informative and inspiring for all the aspirants, including me, who want to pursue their MBA from a premier institute. I hope this session cleared everyone's doubts and motivated them to prepare, prepare with vigor and enthusiasm. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all the attendees for patiently yet actively listening to this discussion. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you and all the best.